Audrey. Welcome to today's nature story time. I am at Grey Rocks Conservation Area in Hebron and we are going to be reading Over and Under the Pond. And you can see part of Newfound Lake right behind me. Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through weeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there? I ask. Under the pond? Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. Marie. Red winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster-fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and minks stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond. The prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turn frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons and the hidden world under the pond. There's all types of animals in this book and many of them you can see right here around Newfound Lake and at Grey Rocks Conservation Area. I hope you're able to visit. Now follow me and I'll show you a fun little craft that you can do related to this book. In Over and Under the Pond, they rowed over the pond in a rowboat and now I'm going to show you how you can make your own little boat. This requires some corks and a rubber band. You can take two corks or three corks. And you want to use the rubber band to hold them together, like so. Then you take a toothpick and put it right between the corks to be your mast. And then you choose a leaf to be your 
your sail. Let's see if it floats. You can make boats out of all kinds of materials. Here's a boat that I made out of a recycled produce container. I'm using a popsicle for my mast. And again, I can choose any kind of leaf I want to be the sail. And it's ready to go.